Heavy bombers used by the US and the Britain in the World War II were sitting ducks against excess power as they could not maneuver quickly and flew in predictable routes. These heavy bombers were being destroyed in great numbers, sometimes having over 20 or even 30 percent attrition rates. This was largely due to flak attack from the ground and German interceptors. The US and Great Britain had few fighters that could take off from England and pursue steeply into the Axis territory. This was largely due to the insistence of the US military officials that a heavily armed group of bombers in close formation, mainly in the combat box, could easily defend themselves. A lack of research in the long-range fighters aircraft that could escort bombers to and from targets led to massive losses of bombers over Europe. While some fighters such as the P-47 could be equipped with drop tanks, these fighters could sometimes only go part of the way while escorting allied bombers before turning back, especially if encountering enemy fighters. During World War II, only a handful of fighters, for example P-47, were equipped with drop tanks and even then they had to ditch them before going into the battle in order to not compromise their aerodynamic performance. Due to this reason, many early fighters being used as escorts while lacking the fuel required to make it back to base. Due to the confidence of the American military leadership and that the bomber would always get through even when flying without fighter sports, many planes such as the P-38 were not initially built to be equipped with drop tanks. These planes were never designed for the previously produced B-17Fs were stripped of their bomb carrying capabilities for this purpose and instead used that load capacity to increase their defense armament and ammunition capacity. Promising escort planes such as the XP-61E and the XP-81 were converted from already in production planes but either took too long or were insufficiently done. The bomber YB-40 was modified to carry over a thousand pounds over 11,000 rounds of 50 caliber ammunition in its bomb bay. This is up from less than 4,000 rounds total for normal B-17s. The YB-40 can carry an additional 5 50 caliber heavy machine guns to the defense of armaments going from the standard of 13 with the B-17 to a total of around 18 guns. In addition to the total projectile weight, the additional weight of the guns mounting for the guns and turrets also increased the gross weight for the plane from 54,000 pounds to 63,000 pounds. Some YB-40s had as little as 14 guns while others had around 30 total machine guns and cannons of different calibers. This variability was largely due to the fact that the outfitting of the YB-40 was achieved after the plane had been built and delivered. Some also had additional turrets installed and, and others still had additional waste gunners and locations installed. A total of 25 conversions were made from the B-17F bombers with only 13 being deployed to combat in Europe. One of the standard additions was the Bendix Chin turret underneath the cockpit being fitted with two 50 caliber heavy machine guns and was remotely controlled by an onboard computer. The others were kept stateside. On transit to Europe, one of the 13 YB-40 was crashed and though repaired, never saw combat once delivered to the UK. In May of 1943 and assigned to the 327th Bomber Squadron, the YB-40 flew in total of 13 missions from May of 29, 1943 to July 29, 1943, being officially removed from the service shortly thereafter. Additional weight increase of the YB-40 over the fully loaded B-17F along with a drag created by the additional turrets in its waist gunner locations made it difficult to climb to the 20,000 feet and it took nearly 48 minutes. It took a relatively speedy 25 minutes in the B-17F from which it was converted even once at altitude. They could hardly keep up with the fully loaded B-17. And after the bombs were dropped, the YB-40 escort planes could no longer keep up and fell out of formation with the planes that they were designed to escort. During the few missions that it flew, it was found to be good at defending itself but not providing much additional value in defending other planes in the formation compared to the standard B-17. 
during their two months of active service. They shot down a total of five confirmed and two probable German fighters with the loss of just one YB-40. The conversion of a B-24 to the same purpose had serious technical issues and was abandoned after a single conversion was created. The YB-40 program did have an immense and positive impact on the development of the B-17. However, as the last 65 to 90 example of the B-17F that were built were equipped with the chin-mounted Bendix turret, with this being a standard feature on all the B-17 thereafter, the majority of the remaining examples were returned to the US and other converted into trainers or group transport. YB-40 had somewhat unique armed and armored layouts that offset waist gunners were far more efficient as well as improved tail gunner stations with much larger windows. Both of these features not only increased visibility for the gunners but also the amount of sky that they could cover with their defensive fire as well. These became standard features on B-17 that came forward. After the war, Adolf Goland, an ace pilot and later chief of the fighters for the Luftwaffe himself stated that the YB-40 was not worth the cost as it converted what could have been otherwise a heavy bomber into a gunship during World War II. It lacked the ability to carry bombs and lacked their performance to stave information and to do the job that they were built to do. Gulland pointed again that the YB-40 was only able to shoot down five confirmed Luftwaffe fighters with two additional being probable, all for the loss of one YB-40. Its contribution to the later B-17s undoubtedly made them more effective against enemy fighters and as such did have a sizable impact on allied lives. The YB-40, which was created out of desperation, abandoned active duty only a few months after joining the battle, but its memory endured until the war conclusion, a legacy that made it possible for many allied airmen to return home. To watch more videos like these, consider subscribing to this channel. Cheers!